I'm LaVon Sawalski, and I'm glad you could join me today. I'm just doing the last bits of getting ready for the painting that I'm going to work on. Uh, I know the last episode and the episode before that I showed different tape, taping techniques. This time I'm going to use one of the techniques again, and I've just put my mat and done my measuring. I'm going to put the mat back here, and I'm going to just get my finished work right there and put it up. You know, if you guys enjoy this, you can paint along with me. It's a lot of fun and uh, you can always watch the tape and stop it whenever you want to. So this is right here and holding it together and I've got my mat back here. Now the picture I'm going to do today is a uh, picket fence. And the picket fence is in front of a beautiful white house uh, with one of those wonderful little um, roof lines that go over the door. And I just think they're so interesting. And I really love them. So I'm going to join the combination together and do a picture. I'm going to put this one right up here next to the picture so everyone can see. Oops didn't want to stay there. There it is. I need to see it too. And the other thing that I want to do, because I tend to be drippy, I, my paint will be dripping all over the place. So if you are of the same type, you're afraid you're going to be splashing, you can always cover whoops, all the way down and cover all the border. Now, it really isn't necessary because if you frame it, that will be outside the matting. But if you're not careful or you don't have to want to worry about the framing and whether the matting is perfect, this way you won't have that problem. If you're even more careful and you want to go up here and cover that part, you can as well. But this is the part that's going to get most of the drips and that's the area I would worry most about. So what I'm going to start now, I've got my pencil and I have been out doing pictures of these wonderful porches. I've been doing photographs, driving around, looking at them, seeing what kind of, of uh, almost like a lattice or, or lacy effects they have in there. So I'm going to start by drawing the edge of this building. I do not want it in the center of the picture and if I'm not going straight up and down uh, it's because I'm working at a bit of an angle. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm not, I'm not, I am at the angle, not the paper hopefully. And I'm going to go down and come down here and then I'm going to put the little porch roof on here and give it some detail there and then create this one of the ones I saw the other day actually had some kind of a of a piece of wood that must have been uh, done on a lathe coming down and uh, another one had a half circle there's all kinds of uh, beautiful beautiful effects that they have and some of them have a they're often very high and some of them actually have a little um, railing that would be something you could hold on to. And again, at, on this railing, I'm going to put a little, little bit of decoration, a little, and this is going to go across like that and come across here. And I think I'll make it even longer and I'll get rid of that line later. Down here, I'm going to have a picket fence. After I get this started, I am going to show you how to, um, do two or three picket fences while I'm letting the color dry on mine because again there's a lot of drying that's involved in here but I'm gonna have the picket fence coming across down here I'm not even gonna worry what it's doing and then I'm gonna have some kind of a flower uh, effect in here not a very impressive uh, drawing but very simple I'm bringing my things over now. I have my brushes 
and uh, my paint. I'm going to open this up and get my glasses out of here and my pencil and my sponge and I'm going to open this up. So this is where I'm going to have my my palette is ready right now. And uh, I am about ready to begin. Now here I have a really cool thing. It's got all my brushes and stuff on it. I'm going to pull this even a little closer so I can just get my things ready. I'm going to go in, get rid of some of these extra, extra lines, lighten them up a little bit. I don't want this to be too dark. I do the darkness so that you will be able to see it, but not, I, it's just enough for me. And I think that this needs to be a little bit further over. I can put an end piece there. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, take my brush. I'm going to mix up a nice sky type color. I want it nice and soft. It is a wonderful shade that I have here. Uh, it's really ultramarine, but I'm, notice how I have a lot of water in it. And I'm just making sure that it's nice and wet and not too, uh, this is watercolor. You know, you can add a lot of water to it. Now, that's probably enough for my sky. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to wet my sky three times. I might not wet it three times. I don't know. Three times is the best. And I don't want it running down there. So I've got my little tissue. And I'm going to go around all of this. A lot of this is going to be covered with bushes and stuff like that. But right now, I'm just wanting to do it. That was one time. Now, I have a very light tint to it because my water is um, my brush for mixing the blue had a little bit of blue in it but you won't see it until I start to drop the paint in that was two this is three I like I like to do it three times because I know that it keeps this nice and wet I'm going to blot this just so that this area I see a few little holidays with no paint on them. Now I'm ready. I'm going to put a little more paint into my container right here. A little bit more. I can see that's going to, I put a lot of water there and here we go. I'm just going to come up and start putting the paint on. I love it when it does this. Ah, this is the best part of watercolor. Just come across. Now if you want clouds, you can do that. If you don't want clouds, you don't have to. It is up to you. I'm not worrying much about clouds because I'm just going to, I just want a nice soft blue sky here. If I think it's not dark enough, I can darken it by starting at the top and letting the color just flow down. Now, what I need to do is I need to take my brush and make it a thirsty brush, almost dry it off and get in here and get rid of the drips of water right there and there are drips right here there's a big a big puddle right there and I'm going in so that is looking very nice now uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to get in here I'm going to go in and down in this area I'm going to have uh, bushes and I'm going to have uh, flowers and things growing over the picket fence. So I'm going to grab one of my little bit smaller brushes and I've got my thing in my hand. I'm going to take some pink. Pink would be nice. Now this color is very, very bright that I'm using here. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. This is um, either a rose or an alizarin crimson. I'm going to add some water to it. Maybe I'll add just a little yellow. I know that's going to orange it up, but hey, I'm feeling in an orange mood today. Now, you can go in and just start putting some flowers in there. They're just kind of happening. We don't have to be 
really tight about this. We don't have to, you know, work every picture. We can just literally let the colors emerge if you want to do it that way. Now it's running in there because it's wet. I can also take, I'm going to take another one and I can either randomly hit it with water or I can just splash some on and make some nice, there'll be some flowers coming from down here because we don't want them all just in one place. We want this color reflected in several places. I'm going to pick up my drips, pick up my drips, pick up my drips. Just go along and pick them up. Otherwise you will have blossoms or these areas that have little hard edges where the paint is being pushed over. All the pigment is just being pushed over the little pieces of pigment. Okay. Now. When I do this next thing, I, I'm going to do something I would not recommend doing. I'm going to blot it a little bit, and the reason for that is that I don't want it too wet. I would normally just wait. Now, I'm going to mix up a green in my palette here. And I am going to take and I'm going to mix the yellow. Now, if you would rather use a green, this is a, I think it's sap. Uh, it could be, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Uh, and I'm mixing yellow ochre with it. I want this to be a nice light green color, very, very transparent. And more yellow ochre. Any of the yellows that you want to mix with it if you find that's a great shade. I'm going to go in. The picket fence is down here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do zigzags. So I'm just going to go up and where I can zigzag, zigzag. I'm going to add some yellow to this. so great around here. There's so many wonderful places with picket fences that you can enjoy. Okay, and there I go over. Now that is, that's the top of the picket fence. I want to take and blend it in because I don't want it this hard edged and I'm just going to go in and bring it in and just bring this up. I don't want it to be the same everywhere. I like my little variety here and it comes down and goes across in several places. I'm going to soften all these edges so they don't look like I just zigzagged. I don't want anyone else to know what I did. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre here and there just so it, the color changes up a little bit. And then I'm going to take the same color and some of these pickets I used to have one like this. I think nowadays so many of the new fences are more of a plastic. The one I had, you had to paint it. And I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre. And I think they were almost like handmade. I'm going to go in and just give the feeling that there is a picket here and there. And you can see the spaces between it. A little more yellow ochre in here. Oh, a little more. Oh, I could throw a little, oh. I threw it in the wrong color. Let's see what happens if I do that. That was the sky. I just mixed that into. I don't want it everywhere, but I'll just put a few little splotches of it here and there. And they all seem to be about the same size. So I'm going to make a couple of them a little bit bigger, a little wider, huh. maybe some narrower. So now this is, oh, this is really starting to feel like a picket fence to me right now. I like that. Okay, now I uh, am going to mix up a little stronger green. Again, it is with the yellow, and I want it to be a little stronger. I'm going to have a tree that's back over in this area, and I'm going to just go in. Uh, you can wet it first if you want. Oh, I don't know what I just dipped into, but it's got a nice red tone. <laughs> uh, things that you do. Now that's all, this green is almost the same. So I'm going in and grabbing some yellow and just making this green come out. 
I don't want it to be just the same. Ah, oh. go around. This is, put my little holes that are inside this thing there and come down. Oh yeah, this is working. Now this is just the first coat in my world of, there we go. And I'm going to come in and I'm going around the railing. When you get in close, you've got to be more careful. One of them I actually painted over this whole area and uh, was not happy about it. Ooh, look at that nice dark color I put in there. Oh, I like that. Got to pick up my drips right now. My little wiping cloth here. Pick it up. Go around this piece of ornamentation and go down. A little more. These are all the bushes that are on the other side of the building. Now, if this is here, you can see through parts of this. I can put some yellow into it, drop the yellow right in so there's a nice feel. This is the bottom of it right there. And let's continue adding some detail. One of the things I don't get to do a lot when I'm here and you can't see it as much as when I'm in my studio, I stand away from my work a lot. I back off, look at it, make a judgment whether it needs a little this, a little that, a little darker, a little lighter. It's something I do all the time. I'm back and forth looking and decision making. And it's something you need to do because you may find that maybe from a distance certain areas of this just aren't what you want them to be or maybe they're just the green just doesn't show up as well in there if I want it a little darker because I really want to pop this out I can go in now I'm doing this with it wet so it's going to really run a little bit but I can do some wonderful effects here it's like a right in there and again I'm going to go tight around here and go in and throw a little bit of this in here and just now this tree if the sun is coming from here and hitting the edge here it's kind of at an angle so the sun is hitting and it's above but it's hitting the side of this with sun and it's hitting this side of the fence with sun so I can go in and just make a few little um, shadows under some of my areas so that it feels like the sun is coming down and just hitting it. If it's too dark, you can always lift some up. You see what I just did? This is a thirsty brush. I've wiped it off and now I'm just going in and wiping some of this up. If I feel that it's a little too dark in some areas uh, or, or just I want to get a different look, I'm putting a few little few little pieces of branch that have just kind of come out there oh that's looking good this little round thing is not quite in the center of the piece of wood that it's coming out of so I have to kind of move that a little bit little details details are good they're usually meant for a little later in the painting but I try to keep it looser in the beginning let's bring this down and have that there so it's going to be a taller railing okay now this is drying you know what I promised to do for you let's see if I've got an extra piece of paper here and uh, this the one nice thing about the watercolor or maybe it's not a nice thing but it dries a little bit lighter so you always have to put the paint on a little darker than you think it's going to be and then uh, it will dry lighter. If you put it on and you go, ah, oh, that's too dark, you can always get in and do a little texturizing, which works really. I don't like what I just did, but you can do that if you want. If you don't like it, take my brush back, wipe it off, put some more green on it, and I can just drop some more green in. 
and get rid of what I just did because I didn't like it that well. Hey, I'm entitled to change my mind on things. Now, I'm going to leave this for a sec and I'm going to grab another piece of paper. I've got back here. Oh, some of them have pictures on them. Doesn't make any difference. Oh. And I'm, I can even hold this up like this. When you're doing a picket fence, there are several types. I'm letting this dry for a few minutes. There are several types of picket fences. And the most common I am seeing lately seems to go down and dips like that. And then it has uh, a fancy, oh, I hope you guys can see this. I'll do it, I'll do it in paint. Hey, this is just going to be in paint, so don't, don't think I'm going to do it any other way. You can go down and it dips like that and then it has a uh, pole or that holds it up kind of this area like that. Now I'm going to put a little stronger paint on. I would never do it in just this blue but I'm going to show you what you can do. I'm mixing some green, some yellow and with this blue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to do my ziggy zaggies going up and down and then put them between and I will bring this up and put some color into it so it isn't just this one color and just bring it up and put color into it and so you can see that this wood I've got to put more color From my perspective, I can see this really well, but I know that when I'm doing it from a distance that it doesn't show up as well. So you can see it's starting to look like a fence there. Now I'm going to do the next one. If I continue this fence, and you did, let's see if I can do them. I hope this shows up. I'm going to look at the teleprompter and see. Okay. All right. So you can, I know you can see what this looks like. If I were to draw it this way, just imagine I do that, do it that way, um, and I've done my greens around it. I will mix up often, I've got to make this a little stronger too, a nice little shadow color. A little bit of this in it, a little bit of burnt sienna to set it. And I would think of this as being three-dimensional, so you would have a shadow there. And it might cast a shadow over here. That's if the sun is coming from this direction. And you'll have a shadow here and here and here and on the next one as it goes across. So that I think in terms of this as being one way, I can't do the whole thing at once because of drying time. But you can do your fences so that you're going to see me do that to this one here. Even with it being that abstract, I still want to show the, um, the shading on the fence. So I'm going to, whoops, plop this down and then it'll be out of my way. Don't leave your brushes in the water like I do because it's not very good for them. Now I will go up and get, mix some more green. This is yellow with the blue. My green that I'm mixing is way, way too dark for what I want to do. So I'm going to add some more yellow to it and I'm going to add some more water. The water really will lighten it. I, it won't be the um, the yellow that I like in the green, but I'm going to put a branch coming in from here. I'm going to add some more yellow to it and do some fancy blotting. I love the way that looks right now. It's nice. It's yellow. I'm going to bring this forward and 
Just leave it the way it is. I like that. And I'm now going to go in and start creating some bush effects, little greens for behind these flowers. They're going to make the flowers pop out and look like they've got some I can also add some darks to the flowers, but I love this negative painting where I just go in and add a little detail. Now on this one over here, I felt like when I looked at it that it was a little too much white on the edge. I want to have some kind of a... This is the fence in the front. Between the fence and the house, there's a yard, and in this yard, there is bushes and vegetation and all kinds of things. So I'm going to get in and add some color here. And it can go behind so it looks like there is some kind of a, oh yeah, right in here. Now maybe I can do something there. Oh, I like what that just did. That really shows up. I'm going to add some more yellow to it. And come across and add a few little things. So hopefully it looks kind of uh, like there's a beginning maybe of a levels in this yard. And again, I'm going in and putting a few in here. I'm going to put some things here. I'm going to make some of these a little bit stronger. And come around and do that. This is looking nice. Now, um, I could add more flowers. I could soften this in. However I want to do it. Maybe I want to use a little of that right in this area so I can up underneath here. When I use a color one place, I usually try to use it in more than one. So there's a, a nice um, representation so it isn't just oh, the dark color in one spot. And I am going to, I've got to leave this area here alone for a few minutes. Uh, for the shadows, but I could put in my window. And I'm going to have, this roof is going to be pretty high, even though uh, some of them were really pretty high. So I'm going to have a window over. The door would be here. People would be walking in. And this window would start about this level. So I'm going to have a window right about here. It's kind of off the page, but that's where it, it's going to be. And there'll be one above it, maybe the, the floor above. Just a bit of a window. I'd like to erase those in a few minutes if I can, um, because they're a little bit dark right now. I'm going to grab the eraser because it's a little more dark here than I want. Just get some of this pencil line off, and I think you guys can still see it. OK, here goes my window. I'm going to take, and I'm going to use a light color first and go in and just do my panes of my window. I love it when they're not perfect, when they sort of have a old look to them. That's one color. Let's throw some more colors in. Let's put some burnt sienna in here and see what happens. I could put some yellow ochre in there and see what happens, or raw sienna, or anything. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. There we go. And here. So that is starting to show up. And now I'm going up to the second story and doing the exact same thing. Probably a little less so, though. I don't want this as obvious. This is up there. It's off the page. I don't want to call your eye up there and go, hey, look over here. I want it to be really, really simple. So let's just put a little bit more blue in that and just leave it alone. There we go. There. 
Okay. Now, I can't put the shadows in here, but I can add some more dark reds and, and yellows to this mixture, and I can add maybe some nice purple somethings back here. I don't know what they're going to be, but I always like to have a little purple something in a picture. Maybe a some kind of little purple flower. It will offset the, I'm going to add some of the same blue I just had in the, uh, and the red that I used in the other flowers. So there's going to be a little bit of this here and we'll just plank it in. Oh, those are looking, those are really looking good. And then I'm going to take the same purple and put some down in this area. I'm actually splashing it the way I did in the, uh, the episode before this. And I was talking about splashing and I'm taking a little bit of the purple and the blue and I'm just hitting some color on it. That's where you have to cover up your, your, um, your bottom because if you don't, you'll end up with a color on it if, if you're not careful in your matting. So I'm going to throw some of this right in here. So it looks like there's some kind of a little bit of a purple. The same is reflected there. So you get the same colors in two or three places and that looks pretty good to me. I have to pick up my drip. I want you to know that when I'm doing these at home, I'm not doing as much talking to myself because maybe I am. Ah, I don't know. I'll have to put on recording on in my studio. Maybe I'm saying pick up the drips, pick up the drips. So this is starting to work a little bit better and it needs a little darker green in there. And hopefully this area is drying over here for me. I've got this going and I'm going to put some darker greens in between some of this. So it, it feels like there's a variety of kinds of leaves and stuff, lots of stuff in here. And I, and I have the color mixed so that I can show that. And I mixed up a, a reddish orange. Now this is going on dry. I could just wet a few places, just hit some water on them. This is not anything special, just put a little water on them and then I could take the red and drop it in, hopefully. I have to move and stand at kind of an angle to see how this is coming across and if that red is there, oh it would be nice if it was down here too. I don't know what kind of flowers these are but just flowers. There. And that would be nice, maybe, if I splashed it. Oh, yeah. Now you can see it's, it's bringing this whole thing kind of together. Oh, yeah. Little too straight an edge for a vegetation here. And here the same. Okay, that's starting to work. And now I've got to step back for a sec and look and see how it's coming. I don't like this edge right in here. By stepping back, I saw that. I didn't like the edge. It was a little too, uh, not vegetation kind of thing. It just looked like a straight edge. And that tends to be more in buildings and, and man-made things than that. And then um, what I will do, I'm trying to make, I want to put the shadows on. So bad. I love putting shadows on things, but I probably am better off if I go in, wait till this dries, see if I can pick up a few of these edges. Not doing too well. I'll wait till it dries and then do that after. Let's see. I'm going to go in now. Smaller brush. This brush is so teeny. It's just a very, very, uh, we used to call them riggers. I'm going to bring in some of a dark green and make some little bits of stems and things that hint that these are right here and hint that they're
right in that area. I can bring some in here and make sure that this, these little twigs coming up and they're just, they could be coming up, they could be brown, they could be any color. If I make them in a more of a brownish, bluish, grayish color, I've got some right here, which is burnt sienna. I can come around and put a few little um, twigs that the leaves are coming off of because they're just not floating there. Uh, and I'm putting a few in here. I better move my hand down so you guys can see. I hope people are painting along with me or at least watch and then get out your stuff and try some of these effects. They're really, really can be fun, especially uh, the splashing the paint, the zigzagging of the, of the uh, picket fence. It's fun. Oh, I'm going to make this one. I can make one go up. It would be nice because these corners right down here are pretty boring and they're pretty white. So I'm going to, I mean, there's nothing painted on them at all. So the values are extreme. So they're going to take your eye away. So I'm going to paint some, maybe some grasses or some wild, wild something going here. A little grass along the side of the road here. I'm going to put some. And I can put some in the middle too because I don't, I'm not dead in the middle. Oh, a little bit over to the side. So it's a little offset. You can have some come down a few. That'll give the feeling that you have something going on down here. And again, I can hit it and splash it and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's going good. Oh, please, please. Now I've got to do my little, my little dance to the drying things going on. I am now going to attempt. When I do this, the best thing you can do is when you've finished with a color, I'm going to use this area right here for mixing up my shadow color. So it's always best to clean your little pants out when you're working with a paper towel or I use a lot of say old, old rags. I have an old rag here that I will use for that and I'm going to mix up I don't change my water very much and I think the reason is that I don't go in and stir it a lot. When you do, you put a lot of the dirty uh, pieces of pigment into the water. So if you just go in and get some water, if you need to wipe it off and you, you can wipe your brush off first on, um, say, a t uh, you can wipe your brush off first on a sponge and then uh, you can so you get most of the dirt off and then get a little water on it. Now I'm gonna back and I'm gonna mix up some shadow color. I'm a mixing and I'm putting in the shadow color. Little strong right now. Uh, some of you nice blues. Now I try to. Oh, there we go. This is getting the way I like it. It's a bluey, purpley color, and then I put in a tad just a little bit of, uh, of a, like a burnt sienna, just to gray it a little bit. I want this to be just wonderful. Now I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to take out some of the, I'm not going in and wiping it, I'm just letting the uh, paper towel wick up the green that was in there. And I'm going to have a, a clean brush at on hand now for getting that yellow into here or a warm into my cool. Now, if this runs, back to the picture, I'm going to paint the house. Um, if this runs, it won't if you let it dry. Mine very well may. But this is one of the things I love to do with the pictures. I love to go in and the house is a piece of wood here that goes right down the side. You can make this. It can stop someplace so you don't catch the shadow on it. You can take a very small brush, I got a little one here, and you can take the same shadow and you can bring it across so it looks like you have some clapboards or whatever you have if you want. Now at the same time I'm taking this brush, I've got three brushes in my hand right now, and I'm going to drop in some warm into my cool and let this just happen. Oh, I love that when it does that. 
more of the shadow color. This is a window. There are uh, woodwork around it, and the woodwork around it is throwing a little bit of a, I wonder what I put in, oh, there's my yellow, uh, throwing a little bit of a shadow so you can go in and do that. And then let's see. Now I'm going to take, I have to keep checking which one is my one that I'm doing for my shadow. This has a shadow here and underneath the handrail, there should be a shadow. There might be a shadow on this side. Oh, I love it when the shadows go on. Back to my warm and to my cool. Woo! Oh, so much fun. Maybe I'll put a shadow going this way between some of these two. There. So I can now remember the beginning. I showed you that I sometimes cast shadows using my picket fence. Again, I can go in and throw some shadows in here. I don't have to be perfect because who knows what this is all doing. But it gives this feeling that uh, there's shadows. When you get one perfect, let's get one down in here and there. And I can go back in and throw some warms into it. And just... Okay. Oh, looking good. Okay, now this is the part that takes courage. <laughs> I love to do this part, but you know, you get a nice picture just about finished and then you go, oh, I'm going to, oh yeah, well, I'm going to put on shadows running. There's a big tree that's behind me and that tree is casting a shadow on this building and it's casting it. Now, if this runs, it's not my fault. It's the fault of the paint not being dry. So, hey, I got a good excuse. I'm going to cast a shadow from here, from that tree. See that tree just cast a shadow? That shadow then went across some of these bushes, and it might have gone across here, and then it comes here, and it goes, oops, I need more, and then more shadow. Comes across, and whoop, across the side of the house, and maybe there is a another branch going off. Now there could be leaves, whatever you want to see on that, and that's going to cast a shadow all the way down into here. Ooh, I got a drippy shadow there. Don't drip. Yeah. And I'm going to have maybe a second tree because that gets, that looks so good. We'll have a second one that's maybe over here. We'll throw some more shadows over here. Hey, I like this. This is, I can get a little shadow. Only the shadow. There we go. And another shadow coming across. And it may not hit anything here. Who knows? Everybody will, I think, understand it when they see it. It will make sense to them. Here we go. Over here and down there. All right. I would probably add, oh, I forgot, I have a shadow under here because this is a bit of an overhang. So there'd be a shadow maybe in that area as well. And then I'm going to, okay, I hope this is looking the way I want it to. Right now I'm going to pull back a little bit and look at it. And I think it's working pretty, pretty well. I might want to add a few more details to it. But for right now, I've got to let it wait. I see I will put it up in a place in my house where I will see it. Every time I'm walking through a room, I'll look at it different times a day, different lighting. The lighting makes a huge difference. Um, what I see under these lights is very different than what the uh, picture may actually look like. This is the most fun. Wait for this part. <laughs> Wait for the paint to dry. Don't rush to, to take it off and always take it off at a bit of an angle uh, because it. some papers are not too happy. See this paper right there, there's a little bit of a, of a um, 
edge coming off. I can see it right here. And it's because I started off just uh, and pull down. I'm putting tape everywhere. And one piece down here. And I'm going to take it off. And now what I'm going to do, uh, my black mat that I had earlier that I measured my picture with. I've got it right here. And I've got some clips. I'm going to put this down for a second. Take my clips. And I am going to put this right up here so we can see how this is looking. That was an unhappy clip. There we go. Okay. There, I'm going to back up a little bit and look at it myself. I think in the future, uh, tomorrow, whatever, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, dark in here, a few little twigs, just a little bit more detail, and then I think it will be uh, done and it will say what I want it to say, this beautiful old house with the old picket fence in town. So, hey, whoa! <laughs> what a mess. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope you get a chance to paint along with me. So until I see you again, keep on pushing that brush around. <laughs>